Greetings! We're doing a Fusion 360 video today because stuff's going on over in Fusion World. Stuff's happening. It's a new year. It's another new shift for Fusion as it morphs into its mother Autodesk Inventor. Which it's been doing since day one, mate. But it's kind of now more visually apparent that that's what's going on. This will be a quick video because it's a small change. But it's got a big impact. And there's no need to worry. There's no need to panic. Unless you're a content creator who's done loads of videos already. And now your videos look nothing like the product. So um, it's a, that's a thing. But never mind. So yeah, the, the interface has been changed in Fusion 360. But only ever so slightly. And it's currently a tech preview. So the, your interface still looks like this. This is my old BMW M4 alloy wheel speed modeling video that I did a while back. Uh, you've still got your handful of ribbon bar buttons up at the top with the sketch palette on the right hand side. That will change soon. The new interface is a tech preview that you can turn on in your application settings. And uh, it looks like this. So I think it looks better. Still not brilliant. And I'm going to critique it at the end. I'm going to try and keep that till the end anyway. I've re-recorded this several times because I ended up ranting halfway through. Because there's a lot of things in Fusion that I'm just not a fan of. But um, I think it looks cleaner. It looks crisp. It looks organised. And it's just generally better in some areas. But to turn it on, you go into your application preferences. Go to the preview button here. And then tick the UI preview box. OK. And then reboot Fusion. And then it'll appear like this. So... It's been reorganized quite significantly, and I think there's several leafs that have been taken out of Inventor's book. <laughs> I mean, Inventor's got a lot more buttons, but they're now organized very much like Fusion. Uh, so it's it's just better, though. It is better. Uh, everything's now structured into panels with uh, tabs along the top with your different environments, and then each modeling environment or each, I guess, modeling area. I don't know what they, I don't know what they call these workspaces. Uh, it has its own set of tabs based on what it is and what's on offer, I guess. So that's that's okay. Uh, when you jump into a sketch, for example, the sketch palette on the right-hand side has been overhauled. It used to have a big dump down here of all the sketch constraints, which was a very questionable design choice. They're now listed up here uh, on the sketch panel, which is fine, I guess, but they only list the four or five most... I've added this one here. I'll just reset all the toolbars. Uh, the, the only list, the five, I guess what they've recorded as being the most frequently used constraints. The rest of them are still nested down here. Uh, the same with all your sketch tools. Um, one thing I have noticed, though, is that a lot of the tools have been stripped away from the right-click menu. So I modelled up this watch today using the new interface. It's actually my watch that I've got on right now. Um just to get used to the new interface so I could do this video and pass an opinion on it having used it quite uh, quite a lot and quite extensively and I've noticed that a lot of tools which were on the right click menu now no longer are on the right click menu for example sketch constraints project geometry that kind of stuff which I found very bizarre given that Autodesk have previously had a big drive to reduce mouse travel and I found myself with the new interface constantly going upwards and backwards and forwards and it was getting really quite frustrating to be honest but, um, yeah, th there was a couple of other tools which have gone off the right-click menu, and it's very, very unusual, but I still prefer this layout to the old layout. So that's pretty much it. There's nothing being changed with the browser or the, the history tree along the bottom. It's just this interface here. You've still got your, your drop-downs, and you can still pin buttons to the toolbar, which is, is fine, I guess. But new users will never in a million years. Like, for example, one of the buttons that I pinned was mirror because I was finding myself using that all the time and I was always having to... It's a very small amount of click space you've got here to get to that create button. And I found myself, you know, constantly missing it and or, you know, sliding off it and dragging other stuff around. So I ended up pinning mirror to the toolbar. New users will never, ever click that and then pin the toolbar. They'll never do it unless somebody actually explicitly tells them that it's there. So, uh, yeah, that's the new interface. I like it, but there are some areas for improvement and some things that I'm not a fan of, which I'm going to go into now. That's that, that's the new interface, mate. It probably will be coming to the live product pretty soon, so if you want to turn on the UI preview and just get used to it, you can do that. So that's pretty much the extent of it. Also, Lars Christensen's also done a video on this already, so he, he might have more information about the UI, but there's not really much more to it than that. It's just a lot of jumbling around with the buttons, reorganizing it, and uh, 
I would say streamlining it, but I think it's done the opposite of that in some areas. All right, mate, that's the new interface covered. The end of the video is going to be a couple of thoughts and opinions, a bit of feedback to the Fusion team on uh, on what I thought of this new interface as I was going through it and using it. Uh, and you might find it interesting as well, just to see uh, see a couple of different points of view on it. But there's two things that drove me a little bit mental as I was using this new interface uh, when I was modeling up this watch. And they, they have to be addressed, mate. They, they absolutely have to, because these are <laughs> really, really frustrating. And the more you're consciously aware of it, the more frustrating it gets. The first is the poor use of space on the ribbon bar. I mean, it's, it's right in your face there. Uh, this is being recorded on a standard office monitor resolution. It's 1920 by 1080. So this is what most people will see on a standard office monitor. And in normal kind of des design mode, you've got 50% of the ribbon bar at the top just empty, nothing there, no buttons. But there's still so many more buttons than this nested down into these expanded panels. When I was modeling up this watch, it's, there's nothing fancy here. It's just fillet chamfers, extrusions, sweeps, project geometries, just standard stuff, nothing fancy. And I was more often than not going into these expanded panels and then going into these nested menus. And it, you know, like appearance, where appearance isn't there, it, mirror's not there, it, it's just button after button after button, which wasn't there, but there's all this empty space. Uh, it's it's just as bad in sketch mode. You know, you've got a good 45% of the ribbon bar up here at the top, just blank. But there's so many buttons, project geometry is not there. It, so that was really, really frustrating. And that's on a standard 1080p display. More people are adopting 4K displays now because they're becoming more affordable. 4K display at native resolution, there is going to be an incredible amount of space on the ribbon bar empty on a 4K display with this new interface. Uh, and my display is not 1080p. Mine is actually an LG widescreen 21 by 9, 3440 by 1440 monitor. If you Google it, you'll see what it looks like. It's like one of these curved widescreen displays. This is what Fusion 360 looked like with the new interface on my display maximized. <laughs> Look at all of this empty space up here at the top. And there's it in design mode. And it was really frustrating because when you go into these expanded panels, they're not the easiest. This is not a, a symptom of the new interface, but they're not the easiest thing to click. You know, I'm a fast modeler. I, you know, I get into a rhythm and I go really quick. And when you move your mouse up to the, the top left of the screen to get at these expanded panels, you inevitably go further than the panel. And then you lose your mouse cursor and it's white on white and you've got to find your mouse cursor, that's fine. But then you, you bring it back down. You're already slowed down. Then you've got to get into this really small clickable area to get the panel. And then you come down, you fly out and it doesn't fly out because there's too much of a delay on the fly out and you've got to stop, wait, and then get at it. It's, and all the time, you've got all this empty space up here at the top. So that was that was frustrating, and it's the same across all the environments. You know, even even drawings. Look at all this space here, and there's dimensions. All of these dimension buttons here are not there. You wanted the ribbon bar to be minimalistic and clean and sharp and concise, but it's the opposite of that. It's sparse. You know, if the buttons that are there were good enough to do the majority of jobs, that would be fine. But but it's just not. And I understand the second dilemma that you've got in that you can't organize the ribbon bar in the same way as Inventor is. So Inventor, for example, when you add extra buttons up here, it stacks them in rows of three, so you can have large buttons or small buttons, so major and minor. Whereas in Fusion, all the buttons are the same size. So in this mode, adding an extra 10 buttons will max out the screen, because you can't stack them. Uh, and if they did allow you to stack them, then of course, someone like myself will probably be the first person to criticize them for copying and mimicking Inventor. So I understand that's kind of a catch-22, but it's kind of what innovation's all about, you know, solving problems, come up with something, because this is this is poor. It's a very poor use of space, just leaving all that space empty whilst people are nesting down into very hard-to-get expanded menus is, is not the best. The second issue which was driving me absolutely mental when I was trying to sketch and access tools with the new interface, uh, it was predominantly apparent in sketch mode. So if I go into sketch mode, zoom right in, and then I'll knock up a, I don't know, a circle. Okay, so I've drawn a circle, and I want to draw a, a center point rectangle, for example. There was a drive that Autodesk did in the past towards minimizing mouse travel the marking menus, you know, the right-click marking menus, 
the idea was all of the frequently accessed tools would be on the right click marking menu so it's all in your eyesight and reducing mouse travel well they've gone you right click in the background your cursor this is really frustrating the, you know the more profiles you've got on screen the more objects th this this flashing is absolutely infuriating <laughs> I know it's apologies if you've if you've got epilepsy, but this is absolutely appalling. But your cursor is going into the context of the object that it's resting upon. So right clicking anywhere here, anywhere on screen, and I'm I'm getting a right click menu generic to 3D tools. I've got no draw a center point rectangle, create sketch constraints, project geometry, all the sketch tools have gone off the right click menu. It's just not there anymore. Uh, you do have this one here, which is like an extra marking menu, you know, there and there. But that's that's not intuitive. You know, you can right click, go down, and then go into that. You might as well, you might as well, just, you might as well go up to that one. So that's that's annoying. Where's this? Where's the sketch right click menu gone? <laughs> Tell you where it's gone. You've got to zoom out, and then you've got to unselect everything, and then right click in the empty space, and now you've got right click sketch options. I've got to move away and right click an empty space to get out. Come on, that's that's not great. That's that's not great. I'm pretty sure you didn't have to do that prior to this UI overhaul. I haven't actually swapped it back to look, but I don't recall that being an issue in the past. Yeah, what's 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 with that? Where's the where's the constraints gone? They're only up here now, which is um, it's not great for mouse travel. I was constantly up and back, backwards and forward, backwards and forwards with the ribbon bar, and it felt like I'd got. It felt like we'd gone back seven or eight years and undone seven or eight years of sort of user interface enhancements and progression but uh so that, that that's i'll leave it there that's the, the two main bits of feedback that i had there are a lot of other things with fusion 360 that were driving me pretty pretty mad but i can uh I can just leave those for another day, and th those are the two main things for the user interface but anyway guys that'll do it for this one uh, I'm gonna leave it there just uh, just to wrap this up. If you're uh, if you're a Patreon supporter for TFI, I've just created a new Discord server uh, where we can all sort of gather together in a little gated community and have cozy chats around the campfire. Uh, so it's it's like a, it's a chat server. It's a private chat server run by me, managed by me. Where once you've subbed up to Patreon, you can join in, and then we can all chat together about pretty much anything you want. Uh, so that went live yesterday. So uh, that's available to anybody who comes in at any Patreon tier. And uh, I'm going to use Discord as the main area for taking questions. And if you're an existing Patreon supporter, I'll put a post on the, the main feed in Patreon, which tells you how to sign up. It's uh, it's a little bit awkward. You've got to create a Discord account and link it to Patreon and all that kind of stuff. So there's a bit of work to do. But any new supporters should get an email ping, uh, let them know how to sign up. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's the new interface in Fusion 360, mate. You can turn it on in the preferences and check it out if you want to. Right, thank you very much mate, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!